Recently, I came across some eye-opening statistics related to year-end fundraising, and I'd like to reveal to you the secrets behind those stats. Keep watching for the valuable lessons behind the numbers. While well, researching year-end giving statistics, I came across an article written by Ronnie Gomez from Neon One outlining some surprising statistics related to year-end ask. The piece was entitled, 10 Year-End Giving Statistics Every Fundraiser Should Know. But there were a number of secrets that only seasoned fundraising professionals know, and I'll be sharing five of those secrets with you now, and five in my next video. So keep watching and be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you won't miss the final five. Let's get started. Stat number one and the first secret. Nearly one third, 31% of annual giving occurs in December. For decades, our donors and partners saw December as the start of year-end giving season. As a result, it's not surprising that December would be the most significant giving month of the year for our donors. Many, at the advice of their financial advisors, scrambled to take advantage of the tax benefits provided by our tax codes to help their favorite charity with a special year-end gift. It's only in the past two decades that November and even October and September have become part of the year-end giving season. A larger percentage of donors than ever before are planning their year-end giving way in advance. What's not lost on fundraising professionals is the fact that in the U.S. the holiday season is not only a very festive time of year where we're taught to be grateful for what we have, Thanksgiving, but that Christmas and Hanukkah and New Year have been positioned as a time of giving and thus the hearts of donors are prepared for generosity. That giving spirit has been extended beyond family and friends to our favorite charity. Just as we have been blessed, we want to bless others. Stat and secret number two. 12% of all giving happens in the last three days of the year. The end of the tax year, December 31st, has long provided a tremendous deadline to be used in all of our year-end and communication and appeals. One of the first lessons I learned in fundraising is deadlines should be used to move donors to action. Who doesn't respect the deadline? Many of us in fundraising take advantage of arbitrary or man-made deadlines to give a call to action. But December 31 is neither arbitrary nor made up. It's a real hard and fast deadline established by the Internal Revenue Service, the single most influential government agency. When it comes to paying taxes, extensions can be had in certain circumstances, but that end of the tax year deadline almost never has exceptions. Not surprisingly, people intentionally or unintentionally wait until the last minute to finalize their year-end giving, and the 12% statistic is not an insignificant number for any nonprofit. That amount would either delight or depress your CFO depending on whether you get or don't get that amount in, as a last-minute push. The advent and popularity of online giving has made last-minute giving a normal practice. I've received calls from donors between 6 p.m. and 11.59 p.m. on the last day of December. I can still recall one specific call from a mega donor on my cell phone at 8 p.m. on New Year's Eve while I was attending a festive event. There was panic in his voice because he couldn't get a live operator at our headquarters to help him with a late stock transaction. In, in my mind, I was thinking, why'd you wait until the last minute to make this transaction? In his mind, he was thinking that at 8 p.m., it gave him plenty of time before midnight. Funny how two people could think so differently. But I responded graciously and helped him get connected with someone who could seal the deal. After that call, I made sure that in the future, all major donors had an after-hours emergency number to call should they have the same problem and many have utilized that convenience ever since. And the fact that the IRS allows gifts with a postmark on or before December 31st means that people can send a gift on the 31st, and we might not get it for a week or two, but they still get the tax deduction. I would recommend that you encourage your donors to finish their giving sooner, but know that most will never change their habits. Stat and secret number three. 53.8% of nonprofits start planning their year-end appeal in October. Well, for me, that's one of the most encouraging statistics of all that I discovered. It means that more than half of all nonprofits get it. They understand how starting early is important. They know that donors are thinking about year-end earlier and they've responded accordingly. A successful year-end campaign takes planning and preparation. Since great nonprofit leaders know the secret, I'm going to share it with you as well.
everyone in your organization is an ambassador for your organization. And thus, more time planning gives you more time to train all your staff to make an appeal and respond to questions from donors. From the president and CEO to the receptionist, all should be trained. If done properly, an effective year-end strategy includes a hot and effective project and program to fund, a properly segmented list, one or more terrific letters or emails, and finally, a plan to phone or visit the right donors. If you need me to unpack that further, check out the video above and learn how to implement an effective step-by-step year-end strategy. As exciting as the, this statistic is, there's a downside. This means that 46% of all nonprofits start after October, which means that they are really pushing it until the last minute themselves. And as we've seen with the kids game musical chairs, there's always one or more left with no chair or no place at the table when the music stops. Translation, when the money runs out, you're left empty handed. Stat and secret number four. November with 46.2% and December with 30.8% are the most popular months for making year-end asks, but 7.7% start as early as September. As highlighted previously, more and more nonprofits are getting the message from their donors that the early bird gets the worm. Every study that I've seen indicates that our donors want information on year-end giving opportunities earlier and that the earlier you challenge donors when they still have money freed up, the greater the likelihood of getting all or more than you asked for. And clearly, the longer you wait, the greater the risk that your major donors won't have any money left to give when you need it most. It is encouraging to see that nearly 10% of all nonprofits start as early as September. Our organization began writing our year-end letters and emails in September. Stat and secret number five. 28% of nonprofits raise between 26 and 50% of their annual funds from their year-end ass. That's a very significant statistic, especially if you're a nonprofit who is closer to the 50% mark that could be hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars. But it's also very scary when you're the organization with that much riding on the success of a year-end appeal. One mistake, one blizzard, and you could see a large number of your efforts cut short. In one of my first videos, I told the story of a year-end appeal that we sent certified mail signature required at the suggestion of some direct marketing consultants. That letter went out the day before a major blizzard hit a large portion of the U.S. Countless donors risked life and limb to make it to the post office to get what they thought was perhaps Aunt Millie's fruitcake, when actually it was a fund appeal from our organization. Well, you can imagine it was not well received and we took a big hit in year-end income. However, I don't want the most important aspect of that stat to slip by us. And that is the importance and value of doing a year-end appeal and a good one at that. These first five statistics were fascinating, but also reinforced some findings I'd seen over the years that confirmed my long-standing beliefs. I hope you found this video to be helpful and I hope you'll catch the final five when they're released next week. And to guarantee you don't miss them, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when the video is released. And don't forget to hit the like button and add a comment below if there's a stat that you especially liked or even disagreed with. Remember, if you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java or on Instagram at DevEffectivenessStrategies or email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.